Hi guys, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be learning about networking. And before we actually go into code, I want us to understand the general idea of what networking is. Okay, so I'm just going to give like an overview. Now, you can think of networking as the ability of two systems to interact, to share information. So one person sends um, a request, another person sends a response. All right. Now, um, let me give a very general example, right? I want to speak with someone. So I'm person A. We have person B. Now, when I, when I want to communicate with this person, I say something. Sound goes out of my mouth, goes through the air, into the person's ears, to the brain. Now, the brain does some form of processing and then comes up with a response that is then sent from person B back to me. Does that make sense? So this is how um, computers also communicate with themselves. So a computer, a client, sends a request to the server. The server processes the request and then sends a response back to the client. Now this is how they both communicate. Now obviously there's a lot of tech going on behind the scenes. I'm not going to cover that in this video but um, I could leave a link in the description to um, some resources if you want to deep dive into networking, okay? But for now, we're simply just going to cover the basics, right? So now we understand what networking is, right? The next question is, how do we make this work? How do we bring networking to programming? That's very easy. Now we've learned that whenever you want to communicate with someone, you need to know the address of that person. You need to know who you're speaking with. Right now, if you want to, if I want to call a friend, I need to know the phone number of that friend. If I want to uh, visit a friend, I need to know the house address. Right. The same way, if you want to communicate to a server, you need to know the address to that server. Now we have something called URL, Uniform or Universal Resource Locator. Right. Now this actually is the address to our server. It allows us to know where we want to make a request to and where we should be expecting a response. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do now is we're going to see an example of a URL. I'm going to break it down into different, uh, just basically understand what makes up a URL. Okay, this is a typical example of what a URL looks like. I'm sure other ones you may have seen, well, you definitely have seen google.com, facebook.com, apple.com, right? So these are examples of URL, but we're going to be using this as an example just to uh, basically explain the different parts of a URL okay so first of all we have this scheme and the scheme basically just tells the server how communication should occur and we have different types we have HTTP HTTPS uh, mail to tell you know and I'm sure you've definitely come across HTTPS and what this actually does is it tells the client to encrypt the data before it's sent to the server now, usually when you want to make a request, you probably just put in like your uh, credit card details, your email password and all of those things. And data is sent like that to the server. So if someone were to gain access to your uh, request, they're, def they're just obviously going to see the um, request that was made and they can see your credentials in plain text. Now the HTTPS adds um, encryption to your data so even if it was intercepted, there's, it's just encrypted. So you just can't do anything with it. Does that make sense? So um, yeah, you just have your scheme to basically tell how the communication should occur. So the next thing we have is the host address. Now this is the address to your server, all right, where the resource is to be um, gotten, right? So um, actually, Every system has something called an IP address. And I'm sure you may have come across this. For example, you have something like 127.0.0.1 or 168.0.2.152. I don't know, I just guess. But you may have come across numbers like this, right? So these are IP addresses and they are used to identify um, different systems, okay? It's usually difficult for people to, well, it is the I don't even know a single one, but it's difficult for people to remember IP addresses. So we have something called a domain name. And the domain name is a, a string that we can actually relate to. So you have google.com in place 
of a particular IP address, all right? Um, so the DNS translates the domain name into the IP address. So we don't need to be bothered about learning what the IP address to Facebook is or the IP address to Google is. We simply just write google.com, all right? So this is our host address. It's the address to our server, okay? Where we want to get our resource. Does that make sense? Beautiful. Now the next thing we have is our path or endpoint as some people call it. So the path is the exact location in the server where we're going to be getting a particular resource, okay? So uh, let me give an example. We have our domain name telling us to go directly to google.com, right? Now in google.com, there are different endpoints or different paths that allow us to perform several operations. Does that make sense? So let's say, for example, in Google, you can fetch a list of uh, books, you can fetch a list of images, you can fetch a list of, um, I don't know, cartoons. So there are going to be different endpoints or different paths that allow you access those particular um, resources. I hope that makes sense. Now, usually in your paths, you could have queries. Now, queries are like additional information that is used to you know, perform more specific um, actions in your server, right? And we're going to be seeing how all of these things are going to be used. We're going to make some cool network requests, and I'm sure you're going to have fun. For making it this far, head over to aberian.ng and just pick whatever product you like. Apply the coupon code MACCO, MACO, and you're going to get 5,000 Naira discounts off whatever product you like, okay? And uh, you have to be the first to use it because if you just go and don't use it, then someone else is going to take it. And it only works for the first person, all right? Now, um, if you're the second, I apologize, but you just have to come back next week and I'm going to give another one, okay? And for those of you who are outside Nigeria, I apologize as well. Aberan is only in Nigeria, but don't worry. Hopefully, we extend to other countries and, well, I don't know, but hopefully, all right? So uh, back to the video. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is HTTP verbs. Now, you know, when you go somewhere or when you communicate with someone, there are different actions that can be performed, all right? You could be speaking to get an information, you could be speaking to give something, or you could be trying to communicate by giving something. You could be trying to just collect. You know, you can just do different actions when you're communicating, right? The same thing applies to networking. When you're trying to make uh, a request to your server, there are different actions that you may want to, to um, perform. And we, we've broken this down into like four ma major actions. So we have um, create, read, update, delete. You can call it CRUD. You remember with CRUD. So create, read, update, delete. These are the four major actions that you, you're most likely going to perform when you are um, interacting with your server. Right, and um, just as there are different actions, there are different HTTP verbs or HTTP methods that you use to perform these actions. So let's say, for example, you want to create a record in your uh, database. All right, so you're going to be making a request, and the method is going to be a POST request. Now, this POST request allows us to be able to send data to our backend. Right, it allows us to send data through the body to our backend. Now. In the back end, you can actually do different kind of manipulations and even create the data, right? Does that make sense? So uh, the next thing is read. So you want to make a read or you want to read something from your server, you're going to be using a GET request. So the GET is simply saying, I want to retrieve something from the server, okay? Now, if you want to update something or update a record in your server, you're probably going to use a um, PUT or a patch. Now, a put is used when you want to replace data. So you can actually replace like an object or multiple fields at the same time. But a patch is when you want to update a particular or modify a particular field in your database. I hope that makes sense. So both of them are to update a record in your database or in your server, your backend. But put is used when you want to replace and um, patch is when you want to update or modify a particular, just a single field, all right? And then you have your delete, and the, the uh, method is delete. So we're gonna be using 
there's actually more there's actually more methods you can use but these are the common ones they're going to use pretty much like very often and we're going to use this in subsequent videos so you know just prepare yourself we're going to do some awesome networking we're going to make some requests in our next video we're going to get our hands dirty all right so um if you have any questions go ahead leave it in the comment section and um don't forget to subscribe yeah.